If Andre Dawson never wore the number eight on the diamond, why in the world would Pose put that number on his release today? But it's very, very straightforward, it's simple, to the point, and it's a great way to finally see Manny Ramirez in Project 70. And so we made it today in Project 70. We finally saw card number 500, but we are not even at the 50% mark. We still have a couple of days to go. Wednesday of next week will mark the official middle point of this set. I don't understand how we're gonna make it another 520 cards, but you know what? We're gonna try really, really hard. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris, otherwise known on Twitter, and Instagram is at CRT underscore sports cards. And of course, my website is where you wanna go for everything related to Project 70, and that is simply CRTSportsCards.com. It is also Friday, which means it is now time for you to vote for your favorite week number 28 card. What we're looking for here is for you to go to the website and vote for your top five cards. Let's take a look at where the rankings are at this moment from the voting that opened up this morning. And yes, that font is very small, but I wanted to fit all 20 cards on the screen at one time. But leading the way after this morning is Ermsey's Shohei Otani, right now garnering 15% of the vote with 29 total votes. Second is that Chuck Styles Shohei Otani with 25 votes. Third up here is a card that released today. It is going to be Mickey Mantle by Fuji, and they are tied with the Shohei Otani by Matt McCormick. So thank you for everyone who has voted so far. And if you've not, of course, go to the website. It's going to be very interesting to see who comes out on top. Will Shohei take all three spots, or will there be a card this week that beats a Shohei Otani? And now also on that voting page, I've included a brand new box, a place for you to sound off. I want to hear your thoughts about this week. It could be about anything. It could be about the website. It could be about your favorite card or maybe a card you didn't like. I want to get some more feedback, some more knowledge from everyone who is a big fan of this set overall. But there was a comment today that I really, really liked. It was, it was around the fact of, hey, show the cards you get in the mail. I don't buy all the cards, but I want to see the ones that you get in the mail. So I said, you know what? Let's go and show the four cards that I've received this week from Project 70, along with Natural's recent companion card. So this is, of course, the recent companion card from Natural. It was all a dream. And now if you look at the stadium lights in the background, it's more prominent in the parallel, but there is that number 23. So we believe this is the companion card for Fernando Tatis Jr. And then the night game parallel, the odds were one out of every four cards were gonna have that parallel. I only ordered two, so I was very thankful to hit that parallel. But here is the night game version of that card. And you're gonna see that 23 is way more prominent in this version. And now those companion cards from Natural are on thin card stock. They're not as thick as Project 70 cards, but the really neat thing when it comes to those companion cards compared to his Project 70 cards, the Project 70 cards are gonna connect left to right in that 20 card mosaic. These cards connect on the back. But now moving on, of course, to the actual Project 70 cards. Which four cards did I get in the mail this week? Leading us off is gonna be the Juan Soto by Crayola. And so the wood background here of the 1962 Topps card stands out very, very well. And there's that blue animal, I can't remember the name, but that appears when there is a home run in Crayola's cards. Second up here is probably right now the most famous no hat card out there in Project 70. It was also a base card that was selling for like $90 before the card was released. Who knows what it's selling for right now. The print run is very high. I believe it's over 3,000, but here we have Jonas Never, Joe Kelly. And of course the image in the background that MLB would not let Jonas Never use in the card, so he covered it up with the G. And then third up here, this one is for my Ichiro collection. This is the 1953 Topps Ichiro by Toy Tokyo. And then fourth up here, I just had to pick up this card. I'm not necessarily collecting this artist, but when this Jacob de, Jacob de Grom card came up, I said I need to own it because this may end up being the Ermsey Trout of Project 70. And here it is. It's the Ermsey Jacob de Grom, the fantastic de Grom. 
So we'll see what cards I get in the mail next week. I'll show them more on Friday. But also, if you get mail days on and you're on Twitter and you're on Instagram, tag me in all your posts. I'd love to see what you guys get in the mail every single day from this set. But now let's get back on track here a little bit. But also on Twitter today, Anthony Ronaru, I think that's how you said the name. He's got a blue check mark. He used to play Major League Baseball. Tried to say that he was probably the biggest Project 70 fan out there. I think a few of us out there have him covered. So if you're not following him on Twitter, check him out. I retweeted his post today, but it's great to see someone else who's not really a fan of baseball cards, but fan of art and the culture that these cards bring us every single day of the week. But now let's talk about the cards that released on Friday. First up, we have that Andre Dawson by Pose. Second up, we have the Yankees team card. Man, there's a story behind this card. This time from FDOT. We also have Mickey Mantle by Fuji. And then ending the day is going to be Vladimir Guerrero Jr. with his dad. And this time designed by Keith Shore. And now somehow, every time I wear this shirt, there ends up being a card with pink in it. I don't do it intentionally, but it happened, I think it was last Monday show, I had this shirt on. And of course, today we have that Vlad Jr. So let's go ahead and talk about that card from Keith Shore. The inspiration from this card is the show from many, many years ago. I'd actually forgot I watched this show as a kid, but it's my two dads. And so if you've not seen that show, and look, it's been decades since I've seen that show, you're not really going to understand the reference. And even though I watched the show, I'm kind of a little confused as to why the McKellar beer guy is on the card with Vlad Sr. He is in an Expos uniform. This is, though, not a dual card. This is a Toronto Blue Jays card mixed in with the Expos. It's cool for all of our Canadian collectors to have both teams on this card. But here's the neatest thing about this card. This is the 11th card from 67 Tops. This is the 11th Vlad Jr. And this is Key Shores. 11th card overall. So 11, 11, 11 on this card. And so while we're on the topic of 11, if you count the blob on F. Dot's Yankee team card, you get 11 players on that card altogether. But this card in a standalone format, if someone comes into Project 70 in six months and looks at this card, they're going to be like, F. Dot doesn't know what he's doing. This card doesn't make any sense. I'm a Yankee fan, and yet you've got Garrett Cole and DJ LeMayhew on it. This is not the legends of the Yankees. But here is the thing with this card. This was originally the Field of Dreams card that he was going to release, talking about the game in and of itself. But of course, MLB, Tops, they did not have their ducks in a row, and all of those cards got scrapped other than... Keith Shore's card, but now thankfully F. I was able to retool the card, remove every single reference from the game out of this card, which must have just been a painstaking ordeal to get this card approved. But here it is. We have the second team card in the set. The very first one, of course, was the Padres by the Sioux Surgeon. But now we have the Yankees team card. So you're always going to have to explain this card to someone who comes in new to the set because some of the faces on there do not make sense, but the card as a whole, as part of this monster of a set, makes complete sense. But while we're on the topic of making a card make sense to either a new fan or an older fan, I think we might as well go ahead and dive into the Andre Dawson by Pose. This is Andre Dawson's second card in the set. Of course, the first one was the one released by Mims Bands. But here is the thing with this card. It is great to have an exposed player on the front, although this card in the gallery on the website will fall under the Nationals. I probably should go back and change that, but we'll see how I do in the coming weeks when it comes to splitting out all of these teams. But here is the thing about this card. It has the number eight. It also has the word awesome on it. And a lot of you on Twitter and on social media said, this card doesn't make any sense because Andre Dawson never wore the number eight. But remember, art at times is not meant to be taken literal. If you look at the card, what does awesome and eight represent here? In my mind and to me, what it represents is the fact that Andre Dawson is one of only eight players in the game of baseball to hit 300 home runs and also have 300 stolen bases. So to me, Pose is telling us that Dawson here is a member of the Awesome Eight. But I also know his nickname along with the Hawk was Awesome Dawson. 
but I like to combine the two here, so we'll just go with the awesome eight for the 300, 300 club. But now for the card that I really do not want to like as much as I do, because it means I'm probably gonna end up spending $20 that I don't really need to spend on this card, but here it is. We have Fuchi back again with the no face. I mean, it's been a few releases ago where they're like, I'm gonna start releasing faces. I'm gonna be more graphical. That lasted about two cards, but here it is card number 500 mickey mantle but this card when you mix in 53 tops this is just a classic looking card this is classic fuji this is a really really cool looking mickey mantle i don't know if the fans are gonna like it but for some reason for me this really harkens back to his beginning days of project 2020 and i think he just nailed 53 tops and he nailed the spirit of project 70 which is celebrating the years and the rich history of tops this card is also going to look fantastic in a psa flip hopefully a psa 10 it may be very very difficult to get this card in a 10 because this card is not centered from the beginning but hopefully when psa uses or grades these cards they use the reference material from the top website but i just really want to see this card in a psa flip because i think it's going to be out of this world amazing this will now complete your daily download for friday night this also completes week number 28 in project 70. go to the website crtsportscards.com vote for your favorite card from this week and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button it has the number eight it also has the word excellent on it and a 